and you tell the um seller the guy that the person that's standing at the cash like the counter i tell them that oh i want a barrel and this person this couple this person that stands at the counter let's say this cashier or something goes to the store and gets you the barrel you can say that the store is like the database and the cashier is the api and you are like the client making requests to the cashier so it basically it allows you to you don't need to know how they implemented the database you don't even need to know what exactly is going on there if like the api allows you to communicate with the database and everything next up we want to understand why Why documenting an API is very important. So basically, when creating a new product or a new um, services or anything, the users were not there. The users were not there when you were producing or when you were creating those APIs. And you don't want like for you to start first of all new users will be more productive and less time consuming to work with this eliminates the need for people with limited expertise to explain how the api works and why it's important with a proper with a properly documented api you don't need to you don't need to start teaching new users you don't need to more users are more likely to use your product because they understand it they can see the use case they can see okay why i need this if you have a poorly documented api like for example like stripe is a very properly documented it's popularly known as a very well documented api so if you if i wanted to use stripe in my um project i used Stripe the other day and I'm confused, or I don't know how, or they don't have a documentation, or they don't have, oh, this is how you use it. Nobody's going to want to use the API. Nobody's going to get around to even use it, even if they want to. You have to be like, okay, let me find somebody that knows API, or let me watch a YouTube video, or somebody has to teach me this, which is very not efficient and it's not, it's very time consuming. Also, your teams can can keep up with the product maintenance, update more quickly. It helps them to identify and respond to their assigned requests and responses. An API documentation usually contains requests, response, and everything and with, with a company that has different teams or different people working on different um, areas of the code. A properly documented API I keep saying properly documented API. It's wanting to write an API for writing sake. It's another to like not write it properly. So when you have a uh, when you have a log or a diary of your API of the use cases, the request, the response, it makes your team know that okay, it, it, it makes you to keep up with maintenance because you don't just hold once and forget it. You have to be like, oh, we wrote this then want to upgrade it, want to more people are doing this, this is not want to use a different um a different language or something. You will use you will check out your API documentation and be like, okay, all this thing. Oh, I wrote this twice, right? But that's it, Sean. Next up. What makes a good documentation? So basically I'll be saying properly documented APIs properly documented APIs. What exactly makes a good documentation? One, it is concise. You don't want, when you are writing your documentation, you don't want to keep going on, um, on and on and on and on. You don't want to keep blabbing about something. A lot of us here have tried to read APIs or try to learn from APIs and what we do or okay okay let me not go for as far as APIs let me say like stack overflow when you post questions or stack overflow and to get answers what most of us do we just skim through all the 
unnecessary talk, 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 and just check out the code samples. You don't want to bore people off. You don't want to. You don't want it to be bulky, and you want a very, you want very few words that carry like a lot of explanation that carry the maximum impact. So it is entry level, easy to understand and digest. That I would say is self-explanatory. But basically, writing API documentation, you are doing so to teach. You are not Chino Achebein or Wale Shoikai. Nobody wants to read stuff that is difficult to understand. You don't want to drive people away from your product. You don't want to, you want, you want to be like, Okay, you want to try as much as possible to not confuse um, users at all. Like, for example, now you want to say, okay, this because you want it to be entry level. It's not only senior developers that come to your um, documentation, it's also people that use it, your documentation for the first time. I remember when I was trying to learn Node.js and I watched YouTube videos and it gets get to a point where YouTube videos become tiring and you start to read the docs. So I didn't know exactly what I was getting into. I didn't know anything in Node.js. So I started reading the documentation, assuming the person that wrote that doc wanted to stunt on me. I wanted to be like, oh, okay, I'm a major in English. I did this. You write this one, you write this one, you write this one. I would have lost interest since I'll probably, be, I'll probably drop it and be like, oh, maybe I should stick to front end or, oh, let me see where I can try go or something else or watch you to be yourself. So it has relatable and a lot of examples and use cases. In API documentation, yeah, you have, okay, let me, let me share my screen. I want to go to my Chrome. Sorry. Okay. Let's go to Chrome. Let's check out Stripe API. Okay, Stripe, Stripe, because Taking a minute. So yes, if you go to the through the Stripe API on this on the right hand side, with, can you all see my screen? Sorry. Hello. Yes, I can see your screen. I don't know if other. Okay. 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 Anyway, this right hand side. You can see examples of requests you want to send. Like now, what I wrote in this place, it has it has relatable examples and use cases. You, you to show you examples of requests you can make to the APIs, examples of responses. If I wanted to write API documentation, and I went to go and write like um maybe. Like an example that nobody in real life would use. You know, the kind of joke that, that running joke that people tell with um, exams, teachers and exam, how they will teach you one small example, maybe two plus two. Then in the exam, you start seeing differentiation and integration. If when the teacher does stuff like that, the students are more likely to fail. So when you give, examples that are not like that are people are not more likely to use in real life or people are not more likely to care about in real life people are going to feel when they use your use your api in their um in their project it's not going to work you're going to frustrate the users you don't want people that are using or patronizing your so you don't want people that are using your API. You don't want to frustrate them. That's the last thing you would want to do. So you just, for example, look at the examples here, the endpoints, the different endpoints. You have the post request. You have get request with the ID. Then I have an example of 
if you have the example, they use scroll here, and you have examples of um, response that you can get when you make that kind of request, like when you do this to charges, you have this kind of example. One of the main um, advantage of using curl is that it's language agnostic. Like you don't have to write when you use curl in your um, API documentation. You don't have to write for it because it's not everybody that uses your API that is going to write. Okay, I have a chat here. That is going to write um, JavaScript or it's going to write Go, or it's going to write Ruby. So it, like, when people have different languages they're going to use. And for you to start writing um, how you would make requests in every single one of those languages, you will eventually end up skipping some. Maybe you see somebody using, I don't know. Please start skipping some or start not. And you don't want that, but we call, call is just, it's language agnostic. This is what you do. This is what you get. And also, it's also assumed that if you are coding with APIs and stuff like that, you know how to make requests in your language. If you don't know how to do that, you have to, you can check tutorials and everything. But it's always assumed that since you are here, you probably know how to um, make requests. So that's why, that's why people use curl. Good. So uh, after doing that, next up on the agenda is the common sections in REST API documentation. So basically, there are usually five common sections in REST API documentation. We have the resource description, the endpoint method, the parameters, the request example, response example, and schema. So um, I don't know if I, I, I'm overusing Stripe and I should check something else. Is that what Stripe is a very good? Let me check MailChimp, how they are doing there. MailChimp. A very good, very good product usually are accompanied. They should be, no, forget that. Very good products are accompanied with very good APIs. That's it. So basically, let's see how they do this. I guess I set cookies. They shall send me these cookies one day. Uh, I don't have, I don't want, but let's check this is API. So now I said there are um, common sections in API, resource description, resource description. This is, um, this is a brief, action-oriented summary of your API. Usually why users should use your API and how you operate. With Stripe API here, I keep going back to Stripe APIs. With Stripe APIs, you see their API reference here. Usually, um, different APIs have um, different topics, different ways they classify these sections of your API documentation. It doesn't always go like, okay, um, resource description, endpoint method, parameters, request example, request ex um, response example, and schema. It isn't usually, I mean, you, you would see when you read those parts of the APIs that these are what they are talking about. These are examples underneath these topics. But it's, it's always with different um, head. I mean, this is not the SI unit of sections of API. This is all what. So basically, you get that. But once you read that, like now, for example, you have API reference. They did not go and write um, reference description, but you can read that this is a description of the Stripe API. You can, it's, the Stripe API goes that the Stripe API is, an, is organized around REST, REST APIs. Uh, API has predictable resource oriented URLs, accepts some encoded request bodies, and some blah, 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 blah. It's basically why you should use it. It's action oriented. It's what exactly is Stripe APIs? I mean, I mean, sure, you might have heard Stripe before. 
and be like, oh, probably somebody told you that, oh, you should use Stripe, or oh, you should use, uh, this is not an advertisement for Stripe, sorry. You should use um, Flutterwave, you should use anything. But like, what if you've not, what if you've not heard about that and you just randomly stumble upon Stripe and everything? You have to know what, what you are doing there now. You have to know what exactly this API is. So basically, that is why you have this reference description. That's why you describe your API. I feel like you should go without saying do, but yeah. Secondly, we have the endpoints. So we have the endpoints and methods. The endpoint is the address of the resource. It indicates how you can access the resource. The method the methods indicate how to interact with this resource. So basically, we have what we call CRUD API, create, retrieve, update, delete. CRUD, uh, I should have written this somewhere, but CRUD API, C-R-U-D CRUD. And basically, we have the methods that are used to an API is that that um, resource that endpoint is the address of the API. Like now here, this is the base um, URL, the base, the endpoint of the Stripe API. Then from there you start going. Let, let me show you an example of where they do like uh, see endpoints here. You have this V1 balance transactions ID, V1 balance transaction. You have the method get. This is used to retrieve. This is used to you see there, retrieve a balance. This is used to retrieve, get a data from the database. Like when you send the cashier to bring a barrel for you, what the cashier is doing, the cashier is getting the barrel for you. It's, the cashier is using the get method to get that bio for you and this one is the endpoint the one balance transaction id you want this is an example of the endpoint we go down here we see post post is used to maybe if you if the cashier comes a cashier comes to me like i don't know you smart or something that nobody ideally uses i be like what is this please go and you go back and she goes to put the um Cashier there, that's what it's used to create a change. It's like, okay, I'm open my to send data to the database. Like when you are creating a new user, instead of getting like user credentials or getting the user data from the user base or or getting a to do list, you can create a to do list. So that's what post is for. You have the you put. Put is for update, but generally you don't put put here. As you can see, there, there is no put in this documentation. Put is basically for updating. Maybe you already created the user, but okay, now you want to put uh, gender, the gender property. Maybe before you just put um, uh, um, Amarachi Hanacho student. But what gender is she? And you have to go and update that data. So that's what put is for. Then you have delete, which I think is um, self-explanatory. Delete is for deleting the data, removing that data. So basically, yeah. Now, let me show you. Um, see, there are some endpoints that allow certain, some endpoints to allow um, um listen some endpoints don't allow some methods sorry that took me a minute let me check spotify spotify api so that we can see oh why did you so like now with spotify you can't i don't you shouldn't be able to okay um sorry you can delete resources you can 
Let me see. Okay, let me just see. So now, Spotify API, the charges endpoint charge. You can post, you can get charges, but you can't delete your debt, like debit charges or credit charges. You can't say, okay, mm, 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 mm. I'll remove that. I don't want that. It's not possible. Um, especially with disputes too. So some certain endpoints like disputes, um, events, events does not even allow posts to. So certain endpoints allow certain methods. Another section of the of API documentation is parameters. Parameters are passed into our endpoints to influence the response of your request. The parameter can be defined in various ways. Some of these include path, query, and header parameters. Good. So, no, um, Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Parameters. Header parameters are, I said the path, query, and header parameters. Header parameters, as intuitive as this might sound, goes in the header. There are parameters that you pass in the header. For example, um, let me find one for you. Like when you're making requests, sometimes, it doesn't allow you to make those requests if you don't pass those parameters in the header. They include like content types. They include um, okay. So let me sorry, let me show you this Spotify API. Now look. The H tag in curl represents header. Authorization basic YCGSC. That is an example of a parameter you can pass to the header. Okay. I know where is this here? Okay. And sometimes and a lot of times you would not be allowed to uh, make some requests except some open-ended APIs. Some APIs don't allow you to make um, requests without those that header parameters. Next up, we have um, why is this blocking my screen? Let me just check Stripe API. Okay. So. so it's just okay. okay. Next up, we have um, Path API. I got that out of the way. The path API are usually 
Um, they are not as important in some cases as the header APIs, and they are usually denoted in curly braces or with the semicolon. These past APIs, they influence um, the response you get back. If all the parameters influence the response you get back. So basically, yeah, they can dynamically re render different responses from different requests. For example, if you have um, a base path of this, of V1 dispute, and you put ID of three, you get ID from here, you put ID of three or something. This semicolon, this, this colon, that this colon ID is a, is a path parameter. Some places indicate path parameters with curly braces. That one too is, is nice and it's very intuitive. You can raise you can be like, oh, that's a um, path parameter or yes. Lastly, we have query parameters. Query parameters are, let me move this to here. For example, now, Look at this Zoom meeting. Look at this Zoom meeting um, link. This question mark here, after everything after this question mark indicates the query parameter. This MN equals to this. And ID is equals to 32. MN and ID are query parameters. Query parameters are denoted after these question marks. I'll show you more about this when we are creating, when we are documenting our APIs. Uh, and another section of, um, of a properly documented API is the request example. The request example shows a sample request that shows some configuration options. It should be as rich with parameters as possible. Code snippets that contain the same request in different languages apart from Coral are sometimes included in the reference topic. This is something I explained, something I talked about um, earlier but I feel like some people are not around to hear that. So I'm going to explain it again. Basically, again, sorry that I keep going to Stripe, but yes, basically, look, these are examples of, um, of sample requests. This is an example of sample requests and it's written in curl. You can also write um sample requests in different um different languages like you can write in javascript you can write in go you can write in ruby python you can write in you can write in different languages so people with different so people that are trying to um make requests to your apis can just copy and paste those codes in their project you can't do that that's nice that's very thoughtful of you but how many languages are you going to really account for? I don't know. That's why we, that's why even Stripe right now, but you can see Stripe allows you to choose different, uh, you know. This is how you would make requests in Python. I have, I don't know, cause I, I, I'm not a Python developer, but let's check. It's um, Java, Node.js. This is how you would make requests in Node.js. Or um, JavaScript is not here. Or, but so you have different, I can show you like different ways or different how you would share, how, would you, how you would make requests in different um, languages and everything. But usually it's always in default in curl. Reasons are it's language agnostic. You don't. It's not. It's yeah. It's language agnostic basically. It's the same in um. 
uh, on this thing in different languages and examples also it should be rich with parameters as possible you would want to show as much parameters as you can pass in your um what's it called in your endpoint you want to show that you can pass this many parameters like maybe id probably this one only uses id you want to show that okay see now you have id the sources id verify you want it to be rich you want to show as many use cases or as many um, examples that you can create like now for example if it's not just id if it was maybe a parameter like city and uh, if it was a weather api you want to show parameters like city and everything you want to show that okay you can use cities you want to have plenty parameters as well, so you can explain you don't want to use like a handful of them and just like forget the rest because chances are your um, users are not going to use those api those exact same uh, id i mean there are like a lot of people in in the world they are probably there are millions of developers we are, we are not thinking the same then finally we have the response example the response example displays the sample response that contains all the possible elements of a request the response schema defines the elements of this response and their configuration. There's a collection of details that describe the response to a query and the response schema details that properties could be written. Good. So, this is this is the request, an example of a request you could make in curl and when you make this request according to stripe this is the response you are going to get this exact same report so response if you copy and paste this in your in your command line this is the response you're going to get you would want to show that to your um users that this is what um this is what you're going to get you don't just want to paste requests and be like oh there you go that's it you want to show the response example like now you don't just post question and don't just give the answers no that's not very right then after posting the response you write a description a short description and what those on what those properties in this response mean it's not this one is not as um comprehensive because there are a lot of responses but you it's explaining like now this object sit here a string describing the object type with a no no the list response format okay object the data has more boolean url the url for accessing the list that is basically what it is right now so now as you can see as what i said earlier it, it doesn't show it doesn't show that um this is the name the name is um, reference description the name is parameter the name is request example no but as i'm walking you through it you can see that okay these are these are the paths or these are what this is what this pieces of this type api this is what they are talking about right now it says parameters really small here so yeah so that's what that's it on orally explaining what stripe api what makes a good api i can see somebody's chat okay no problem so now we are going to use a weather um, what i'm going to use is an open weather api app sorry apparently people please um if you can i'll post this link here or let me just post this link Oh 
Um, he told me that you guys were going to download uh, Postman. So basically, we are going to create a new collection. We'll name this one. Name this one a weather, weather API. Write the docs weather API. Sorry, that I took time. So here, what are we, we're going to do? What we're going to create? Which add a request. So, uh, if you haven't, you should. If you try to check with this open weather API, you are going to have to sign in and have you get access to your API keys. I'm not supposed to exactly show you my API keys, but I don't really get access to your API key. You go here, API keys here. So now let's carry on. I'm going to use the current weather forecast. It's free and it, can, it allows you to we copy this. We come to our postman and paste this. The city name. I'm currently in Olary. And my API key. I'm trying to be fast. I'm sorry. I hope we let me see the chat. Okay. So also You also can use the unit parameter as your standard. Postman is so great because um, you can easily create um your documentation with this where i work with we don't where i work we don't actually um create our documentation with postman send your request except api key and anyway, so i've written one api key Okay. I don't know why it's saying invalid API. I feel like my own has expired. So I have I create I did this one this morning with the same API key. So basically. When you send the request, what's this person chatting? I'm using Postman. 
I'm using Postman for any, anybody that's confused. All right, I'm just create. Is anyone there else having the API key issue? City new, over. Mine's very well, I'm not having an issue. I think mine has expired because I've been using this since yesterday. Oh, let me create. Let me see if I can use another one. Create another one. Yeah, another version. Let me see my own. What's the next one? Okay, so Valid API key. What is the key they are keeping? Me? Okay, so um, when you send your request, are we getting a response on the, we're getting a pretty response, yeah? In this body. So basically, I don't know why mine is not going through right now. I'm creating it up. I'm just using. I don't think I should just carry on on explaining how it works. Without... I think you can do that. Since it's giving you issues, just carry on to explain how it works. Yeah. 
Good. So with um with postman, go over to your right. You see this icon that says documentation. You click on it. This one it says make document easier. Also save your response. I don't want to save this one because just save go here. There's a save response. You save it. You save an ex as an example. Then you come here. Review complete um, documentation. Let me go back again to show, show what I did. You go here. Down below, you see view complete collection documentation. You click on it. You carry on. That's it. Now here, with Postman, you can edit basically you can edit you see, you see this um this pencil icon you click on it postman uses markdown um if you have issues with markdown i could i have a markdown cheat sheet that i could send to you to you guys right now that i have bookmarked for this sorry Markdown cheat sheets. So basically, I'm going to send that to everybody here right now on the chat. Just in case you're not very familiar with Markdown. Then here is what you write. We're going to start with the API reference. Here is what you write what exactly this API is, like the one I showed you with Stripe. You have this, you can come up with anything that you, you think that what the API got. So the weather API, I'm assuming that since this is the first time we're fetching this API, it might be working on your side. So you see, this is, this weather API, um, gets, the weather forecast of a location period, you save it. Obviously, you can make it more um, robust and more action oriented. Then you have sample requests. You can post, you click here to publish your API. This is where you click to publish your API. You have current environment, you can choose your styling, but we don't have time for that. Publish collection is for when you want to put it out there, when it's not very advisable for you to publish your collection, especially when you have sensitive information like your API keys or your information like that. So if you want to see how your documentation looks like, you go to here, where it says preview collection, then you click there, it loads. You see, it tells you that, please review the highlighted sections or and remove any sensitive information before publishing. That is talking about our API keys. Are you guys, let me see. Okay. Are you guys seeing your documentation? Um, Jen, nobody's there. Yeah. Are you yeah, seeing your, yeah, you're seeing your preview documentation, yeah? Yes. Uh, okay. So basically, you want to maybe edit more, explain more on, what this uh, what these values are? He said, click here to make to make things easier for you to understand this request. This gets the um, the forecast of over of over city. You also want to make your this thing um, grammatical grammatically correct. 
can run it through Grammarly. Also, with markdowns, you can also create a table. I will, see, we will show you in this markdown. To create a table with markdown, in to explain also with the this thing you can go back to your code and write descriptions of your query parameters you can come here and clean your api key and replace it with api key the, the word api key so that people can so nobody can see what exactly the API key is. You come here and give description, the query. This, this represents, uh -huh. for example, if I was talking about queries, after this um, question mark, this Q, this app ID, these units are all queries. This represents the name of the city. stop app id this is your app id this is your app id the units are is it in standard is it in kelvin i'm guessing this is kelvin this is i don't know right this is kelvin this is this indicates the units of temperature measurement. Okay. You see, then you check out your pub, give you your documentation. So now you can see your app ID does not have the, your key app key again, your API key again, because it's sensitive information. This explains what exactly, this, this is what we just used. This is the description of these parameters. You can come here. This is not what we're supposed to be getting in the body. When I did this previously, you, be, you should be getting a an object that is very similar to this, except it's not over here. So we can come here, we can come to our postman. See how very easy it is to create with postman. Very, very, very easy. It's, it allows you to get away with a lot of things. Let's edit our body, shall we? I didn't save this one apparently. So let's go to our markdown. Um, this thing. Our markdown cheat skit. I'll copy out the markdown for tables to explain what those parameters. We're not going to explain everything. But to explain what exactly we are getting back in the response. So that um, people that are using it will know whether, okay, is this what I want or so? So, sorry. Um, okay, good. So people will know exactly. Oh, let's, you can say, um, this, this one is the parameters, the, um, the properties, 
you see the description. Good. So if you are getting properties, please always make sure it's correct. If it's correct, you can say you get a longitude and latitude. You say latitude, latitude description. This defines um it's not longitude, is it both vertical or horizontal? I'm guessing latitude is horizontal. This defines the horizontal placement of the city. So you might want to clean this part out. This Because you don't need it. Also, you can also put that part out. I use it to show the default values of um, this thing. But we didn't act exactly view the API. I don't know exactly what. You can say longitude, because I'm guessing that's what you can see there. Longitude, blah, 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 defines this. The vertical. Also, you want to um, place, you want to write the units here. You want to show what unit this is. Obviously, you don't see that latitude, they are in degree. You might want to tell them that, okay, this temperature, where is that there? Okay, I have a response from yesterday. You want to tell them that, you, you want to tell them what exactly this temperature is when you are writing down temp feels like temp mean temp max you tell them is it in degree kelvin degree celsius degree fahrenheit you tell them what exactly this humidity what degree it is in the time zone so okay i wonder what their degree that this thing is in what degree Open up this weather API. Yes. Anyway. So, yeah. When you are done editing that, when you are done editing that, I mean, did we let I edit it? When I done it, okay. I'm just copy and paste this cheat sheet. It won't take, it won't take a minute. I'm going to write. Okay, so we would write to be this other side of the colon of the this thing tab tab tab. Where is this part again? Um, to signify the other colon. All right, units. It's in degree. This is this goes without saying. It's the temperature, the humidity, the temperature.
it, go, it says um what's the property the property is temp so it would say temp you don't write temperature that can confuse the um the user so you write temp Temp. Temperature of city Kelvin Because I didn't have values in the other one, the table was messing up a bit. So there, with that, we should have our a mock API documentation. Let's preview our documentation. You can see you have the properties. You also want to put a um, a header here. That it says that okay, these are the properties, or these are the this. Did everybody get up to that point? Okay, the chat, some out to see chat. Yeah, I got up to that point. I think there's a question somewhere. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, sorry, I'm going to drive us back on this question now, but I'm asking for some other persons that might be joining me. Now, if you're starting out, if you're starting out using Postman to document your API, after titling your titling it right the API, just like you did. Yeah. Can you get me? Yeah, I can get you a bit. Sorry, it's cracking there. Okay, I was saying if you're starting out to using Postman, Postman to document your API, after giving it a name, after giving it a name. Mm -hmm. Do you authenticate it or you just you no know authentication? After is it okay? Is it where you are starting to send requests with APIs? Is mm -hmm. it here? Yeah, I don't know if it's okay. Now, what I'm asking is a question someone actually sent over. But let me say that. Let okay, me is it the chat? Can I check the chat? Okay, let me send. Let me let me make that part. Okay, okay. Okay, send the chat, send it to the chat so I can understand more what you're saying. What I did before, I just published it. You can publish your collection. I published it, so now it's available online. I hope I'm, okay, so have you sent it? We are waiting, have you sent it? Hmm. Hello? Okay, to get API key, you need to get your API key for this open weather.
if it's to get your API key for Open Weather app, this is where you do. Where is my Open Weather API? Uh, go to here. I actually before here I signed up already, but to log out so that I could show you. But I can't even remember my password. So. But when you sign up and you sign in, you go to this place here, Amara. It show it goes here. My API keys. Even uh, normally, I remember when I first signed up for this API. It um so it gives you your API keys in your mail. So just go here, your API keys, and you find them. Find your keys, or you go um yeah, that's where you find your API keys. Tell me that you're we're almost done. I don't know, but I, I think somebody has been recording, so and I can make my slides available. Are you, are you, did you get that? Yeah. Did you get that? You, yeah. Yes, but, yes, but, I did. But when you run your, this thing, you use your API keys, yeah? Hello? Yes, I got what you say now, Mommy. I... Okay, 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 no problem, sorry. It's, it's fine if you got it, yes. We use the you see how and what we did now, for example, now like now I, I published it, but let me unpublish it so so I can see what I meant, what I did here. So when we are done and we've seen our um API, like we've been we've gone here, we've been here, we've gone here, we published it. You know, normally we go here to preview our documentation. You can take it a few steps further. Let me close some, some parts so that you can see it you've gone there and you are sure that you don't you've not put any sensitive information when you're trying to make the request your api keys you change it to api key or anything i don't know whether this particular one i did that but it's an open weather api so i'm not worried so now you published it it goes uh published collection right it talks api environment you now come here you see your url for published documentation, you click this, it opens a new tab, let me close it. Then this is it, this is your, um, this is your documentation, kind of looks a little bit like Stripe if I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not carrying myself away, but like, yeah, you get me, this is it, this is, this is it, um, it's curl. Yes. This is your body. This is not the correct. This is not where you're supposed to be getting. They want me to pay and no, but and you see, we remove the API key from our request. So it's not it's not showing that long. If that API key should not be in your documentation, please. It should not be in your documentation. That's a sensitive information. So just but it's in then you see you write this you write better api this place better documentation better summary that is more eye catchy this explains latitude longitude temp the temperature of the city these are the parameters the api id that's the api key this is your app id the api key that he just asked about units imperial this indicates that it's, this in case the unit of measurement so basically, yeah. Also, with um, Postman, which I think is really, really cool, you can show how you make your request in JavaScript. Have you seen that? Just go to this stop bar, yeah? This place here. Yeah. You can see different languages, which is even, let's not brag, a lot more than uh, Stripe. So you can see Python, um, PowerShell, Swift, PHP, Node.js, JavaScript, XHR, curl, which, yes. So just choose that. Then let's say, see go. Then this is how you would make the request in Go. Then somebody that's a developer can just come here and copy it. It's copied now and go to his um, project, his listing and make that request. I, I, did we get that? You can also change it from double A column to so, single column. But double column is pretty cool because um, you can see you can see side by side the 
properties, um, the properties definition and the properties you are getting. So please let's change it back to double colon. Sorry. The stuff is everywhere. So yeah, that's basically it. You make it fun. Is there any question? Is there any question, please? Hello? Let me check the chat. Is there any question? I hope we I hope we did I hope we got to this point and we understood how to do it and we have a working documentation on our website now. Yeah, I have working documentation on our website. Yes, that's nice. That's nice. Let's change it back to curl. So yeah, yeah, that's basically it. Basically, yeah. The postman is a lot easier. So, hmm. no question. I guess then we are done here. We are. Um, Amarachi, uh, Sandeep here. I have a question. Okay, no problem. Uh, my question is, is it possible to, uh, um, is it possible to write, I mean, uh, documentation in GitHub for API? Is it possible to write your documentation in GitHub? Uh, yes. Yes, you will do that. It's very possible to do that. Like, for example, uh, I, I do not want to show you because this, yes. Like, you just use Markdown. It, Markdown is universal. Markdown is not just for, um, What's it called? You can use like Gatsby to create your blog. Um, Gatsby is a very popular network, uh, popular um, framework. Let me, framework, yeah, sorry. Thank you for that. Gatsby JS, I could show you the link and post it in the chat just in case you would want. Sorry, let me just find that chat. Yeah, you can post it here. You can use Gatsby, you can use, you use markdowns to write your um, your documentation, the markdown, I, I posted a markdown sheet, then you upload it to you just host it like a normal website. It's just that with Postman, it's a lot easier. You get, so that's why I'm using it. But you can, yes, you can do it. You can push it to normal GitHub. Amra, I think you were asking. Okay, let me show you. Amra, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. I think uh, Sam G was asking if you can write an API documentation on GitHub. Oh, okay. GitHub, the platform itself. Yes. Oh, I'm not sure you can. I don't know about that. You no, can you write can. it. You can. You can. No, you can't. Yeah, I, I don't think you can because you can write it on your laptop and push it to GitHub. To GitHub, yes. So Yes, so I can get to me. You, you, it does, you should not go to GitHub itself, the platform itself, and start writing it. And even if it was possible, which it's not possible, it would be very, very inconvenient. Because well, how are you going to like um, run it on your laptop or run it on localhost to see how it looks self before pushing it? I don't think you can, um, Sadiq, you shouldn't do that. Do you understand me? You can't do that, but you can write on your, you can write locally and push it to GitHub and host it there. But you, you can't open GitHub itself and do that, no, sorry. Okay, I'm All right, all right, okay. Do we have another question? Okay, things to don't have a question. Let me just explain. Amaya, something you talked about Gatsby. I was thinking that, okay, if I'm to use Gatsby, since Gatsby is a static site generator, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can. Since Gatsby is a static site generator, then yeah. I want to use Gatsby to document an API. I'm still going to use Postmark, right? 
You use Postman. Yeah, you use Postman to test your APIs now. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Postman is just like that your your that your your friend, your G that's coming through for you. So that's it. It's really nice. There are other, um, and what about Postman? I just found out, I actually didn't know this um, before, is that you can even create mock APIs. I actually created one, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't as, um, it wasn't as complex. It, like this weather API is not that complex, but at least it had parameters. So this one was just really easy. That's simple. So you can create mock, like now I created this API yesterday when I was clicking with it. I got this um this this response exactly, but like there was no no parameters, no nothing. It wouldn't be a very good something to use. So Postman is really nice. The other um the other people, the other companies that have been creating like mock APIs to and uh, like Stoplight, but Stoplight is a lot complex. It's actually a lot more complex than this postman. So yeah, you, you can just find, find out APIs on the web, create, um, get them, get a response, come here and tweak up the documentation, get published, you can send it to your friends and everything. Postman is really cool. Also not an advertisement for Postman, but yeah, basically, yeah. So I guess that's it for now. Okay. I hope I hope we all learned something from this basically. And yes, remember concise. It should be accurate. You don't want to be creating something that is not correct after ticking all the other boxes. It's, your documentation is not now correct. That's that's just sad, basically. So yeah, that's it. That's all. I don't know if I can share this slides. I don't know if anybody would need it, but let me share it too. Let me share it to anybody that would want to use it. So yeah, just a few things, just understand the different parts of your API and everything. So I, 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 the video can end here right now, right? Um, Sataba. So basically that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Amarachi. Uh, I actually learned uh, a lot in this session today.